goggles here in high visibility jackets. Some video cameras rolling. Got some Kaniacs in the house. Looks like they're working on setting up some signs. The goal here is to, as these activists are doing, hold signs informing the drivers that there is a checkpoint up ahead. To let people know that the cops are doing uh, warrantless searches of car, uh, warrantless stops and possibly searches of cars, you have to be really direct with people. You can't use a sign like Fourth Amendment dead ahead because people don't know what the Fourth Amendment is. So you just have to say, turn here, because people respond to direct orders better, I found. Sadly. Yeah. <laughs> Any other advice for uh, would-be checkpoint activists? You can't stand too close to each other because then you obscure the text of the sign. So if I'm like this close, people aren't going to be able to see people's uh, thing behind me. So mm -hmm. you, you do have to spread out because people are trying like half and 50% uh, to pay attention to the road. So their, their attention is divided and as a result. <laughs> as you can see those ladies yelling and waving at you as they go to the just went to the checkpoint. You're doing this and you're, you're, you have the music in the background from a, a lively, uh, looks like a bar scene or a restaurant. Yeah. You could be in there, you could just be hanging out and not doing this. I could, but I mean, for me it's an act of benevolence. I mean, I could be spending my hours drinking or I could be doing something to fight the state that I don't agree with, that is subjecting me to laws. I would want someone to do this for me and I think that someday this will come back to me as, uh, I guess you could call it good karma, but it's really just the universe of benevolence principle that Ayn Rand speaks of. Checkpoints, yes or no? No. Me? I love checkpoints. I'm gonna only trying to stop people from going into them. I love them, stop blocking them. No, I'm blocking theirs. I want to do my own and stop everyone, arrest everyone. So, Joel, where are we headed? Granite Street? We're going to Granite Street, and see what? if there's anything going on there. Yeah, so uh, yeah. allegedly it's it's been blocked off. So people turning away from the checkpoint would be diverted back here? Give it away. Exactly. That would be bad. Just a short way down the street, people are partying, having a great time. They have no idea what awaits them down on the bridge. Okay, so cops have blocked up this part of the lake. Okay, so Lake Street, which uh, turns, well, turns into granite here, you can see there's some roadblocks. So we see a huge line of cars totally stopped for a very long way, and I'm not sure why. We can see there are more cops. So it turns out the Verizon Center on Granite uh, has, is hosting Michael Buble this evening. So that explains the heavy traffic and probably the heavy police presence. Uh, you know what? If you're listening to this, Michael, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Michael. So we'll see you, we'll see you in like 10 minutes. Okay, as Joel just said, we're headed into uh, several bars on the way back down the street. Uh, we went there to gather information, now we're headed back and we'll uh, head into each bar and tell the bartender, I don't know, maybe a few patrons, just to avoid the checkpoint. It's growing every time. Imagine what happens like when he's triggered the move or right before that. We have more critical mass of people. Yeah. We can have the all of Elm Street covered with people, you know, cop lock uniformed people, telling everyone around here so that everyone knows what's going on and how to avoid it. Right. And then, uh, because already, in terms of numbers, we have police overwhelmed already. Yeah. Yeah, imagine, imagine a little bit more time. Yeah, not a single car going through that checkpoint. Like, how often are they going to do that? They're yeah. not going to be able to get away with it. There will be no revenue. Right. No revenue. No revenue for you. Or you, Michael Buble. Yeah. There's a checkpoint activist. Kind of a dimly lit sign. It's kind of dark but he is also open carrying. Like, on top of the fact that he's open carrying, he is, he is telling people about the checkpoint right in front of a bar. So it is the opportune place, because all those patrons from the bar, they're looking out at him as they're drinking, and they're seeing a sign that's a police checkpoint ahead. He doesn't even really need to tell them, he's got the sign. Next step, we post people in front of every major bar in town, once we get the manpower, so no one leaves without knowing. Very smart idea, one guy's lighting up another guy's sign. We've got some activists with some uh, glowing uh, necklaces. 
They, they really, really love checkpoint activists over there. I mean, could we could we all like learn the safety dance and then do that like while we're holding yeah, the signs? I think we should do the safety dance. Got live free or die. Death is not the worst of evils. Got a man with Billy Rock showing up with some lit. She's got some of the cop lock flyers. All right. The ironic sign, sobriety checkpoint ahead. You don't have the uh, ability to turn anywhere though. Once you're on the bridge, you're fucked. Just walked into this uh, cigar hookah lounge. And, uh, oh, Karma is what it's called? Yeah. Karma hookah lounge. And we got a lot of love from the bartender. She was like, yeah, thanks for doing this. You guys are great. She's really stoked about it. So hopefully she tells uh, some of her customers. Correctly observed. Half of Manchester is out there on the yeah. bridge talking about this stuff. Yeah, what is that? Swirlies and flowers and black lines. No, it's like the feeling of Possibly marijuana leaves, I don't know. I think this is the feeling you get, yeah, when you turn away from a checkpoint at the last minute. <laughs> here we go. We got some Rebels here in high visibility jackets. Yeah. Some video cameras rolling.